Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is number 58 in my exam question series. This is linear kinematics. And if you do find it useful, please do like the video. Let's get into the maths. Okay, so the most important thing to remember when doing linear kinematics is that S is displacement, V is velocity, and A is acceleration and we differentiate downwards. So it's asking me to find an expression for the velocity. So I will need to, to find the velocity, I will differentiate the displacement with respect to time. And the derivative of this is 3t squared minus six. And the constant differentiates to zero. And then it says find the acceleration at the time t equals five. So to go from velocity down to acceleration, I'll need to differentiate the velocity with respect to time. So I'm differentiating this one here. Two times three is six. Drop the power down by one. Constants differentiate to zero. So the acceleration which I'm looking for is when t equals five. So that will be six times five, which will be 30 meters per second to the minus two. which is the same as 30 meters per second per second. Okay, next question, we will need to differentiate this, but first we need to rewrite the power. So this is S is equal to 4T squared, and we've got a T on the bottom here, so that becomes T to the minus one. Now differentiating to work out the velocity because the velocity is the derivative of the displacement. Two times by four gives me eight. Drop the power down by one. And minus one times minus nine is plus nine. And I drop the power down by one to minus two. And it asks me to work out the velocity when t equals five. So that will equal eight times five plus nine times five to the minus two. So I'll go to my calculator, I'll do 8 times 5 plus 9 times 5 to the power of minus 2. And this gives me 40.36. And that will be meters per second. Okay, next question, and we're just asked to work out the velocity, so I'll just differentiate. So these questions are very similar in their nature. 3 times 2 is 6, drop the power down by 1. 2 times 12 is 24, drop the power down by 1. And uh, t to the 1, 1 times 7 is 7, drop the power down, t to the 0 is just 1. So 7 times 1 is 7. So that's the velocity. And then it's asking us to work out the acceleration uh, and the time at which the acceleration is zero. So let's first find the acceleration and differentiate the velocity to get 12t minus 24. And we want to work out the time at which the acceleration is zero. So let's set it equal to zero. Add 24 to both sides. Divide through by 12, and we get t equals 2. Okay, here is the uh, first tricky question, and we have a displacement formula again. This time it's given as x rather than s, but it's still displacement. And we says it says the direction of motion reverses at the point p on the line. So what's going to be happening here is you're going to have an object which is going to go moving in this direction and it's going to have some sort of velocity. And because it's going to the right, the velocity will be positive. And then what's going to happen is it's going to stop and it's going to turn back around and start going in this direction. And if it's going to the left, the velocity will be negative. So the point we want to inspect is this point right here where the direction of motion um, reverses and at that particular point the velocity will equal zero so it's going from positive then to negative so at that point it'll be zero 
So we need to find the um, when the velocity is zero. So we need to differentiate first. So differentiating with respect to time is going to give me 12t squared minus 27. I want that to equal zero. So that's going to give me 12t squared is equal to 27. I can divide through by three. I can divide through by four. And I can square root to get three over four. Technically it'll be plus minus, because when you square root you get plus minus, but it says that t is greater than or equal to zero. So we don't need to include the negative answer for that. So t is 3 over 2. And we need to find the acceleration at that particular point. So the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. So differentiating um, this velocity function here is going to give us 24t. And the constant minus 27 will differentiate to 0. And we want to inspect it at t is equal to 3 over 2. So the acceleration there will be 24 times by 3 over 2. And that will be 36. Perfect. OK, super duper tricky question alert. We have um, two objects moving along a straight line, and we have uh, the displacement of uh, both of these. And it says find the range of values for t where t is greater than 1, where both particles are moving in the same direction along the straight line. OK, so let's work out the velocity of each of these, because the velocity tells us which direction it's going to be going in. Because if the velocity is greater than zero, then we can say that the object is moving forward. And if the velocity is less than zero, then we can say the object is moving backwards. Okay, so let's differentiate this first one. And we're going to get 3t squared minus 8t uh, plus 5. And we want to work out where this velocity is equal to zero, because that will tell us um, where it changes from going forward to backwards. So I'm going to have to factorize this. Um, and I will do so by doing the AC method. A and C is 3 times 5, which is 15. B is minus 8. So we have 3t and 3t all over t. And that's all because the a value is 3. And then we sub in the two numbers, which um, times together to make 15, add to make minus 8. That's minus 3 and minus 5. So we write minus 3 in here. Whoops. That should be over 3. And minus 5 in here. We could divide this one by 3, so we get t minus 1 and 3t minus 5. And this gives us t equals 1, and it gives us t is equal to 5 over 3. So what does this tell us? Well, if I were to draw the velocity on a graph, it's a quadratic that goes through uh, 1 and 5 over 3. So it's going to have this shape to it and that means that between 1 and 5 over 3 the velocity is negative and after 5 over 3 the velocity is positive and we don't need to consider anything less than t equals 1 because we're told that we're just considering uh, t greater than 1 OK, let's look at the uh, the other shape now, sorry, the other object. We have x um, is equal to t squared minus 4t plus 4. So if I were to find the velocity, I would differentiate that. And that would give me 2t minus 4. And I'll set that equal to 0 to figure out when it changes uh, direction. 
that gives me 2t equals 4, so t equals 2. So if I were to plot that velocity, this will be a linear um, e equation for velocity, so it will be a straight line, and it will go through t is equal to 2, so over here somewhere, and it would look like this. So this tells us that the object is going forward after um, 2, and before 2 it was going um, backwards. Okay, so uh, 5 over 3, I'm just going to write this as uh, 1.6, just make it, make it a, bit, a bit simpler. Um, so when are these two objects going in the same direction? Well, from 1 to 1.6, They're both going backwards, because they're both in the blue region there. And then from t greater than 2, they're both going forwards. And the bit in between, which is 1.6 to 2, you can see here that the one on the top is yellow and the one on the bottom is blue. So they're not going in the same direction. The one at the top is going forward and the one at the bottom is going backwards. But greater than 2, they're both yellow, so they're both going forwards. And less than 1.6, they're both blue, so they're both going backwards. And I've just realised that uh, 5 over 3 is not 1.6. It's actually 1.6 reoccurring. So that was a silly idea to change that to 1.6. Let's keep it as 5 over 3. And let's keep this as 5 over 3. Sorry about that. Uh, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And then watch the next um, topic in the series. Okay, see you there. Bye for now.